welcome to the Dojo Talk Podcast. Please remove them shoes before entry. Set Master is here, and you still have not taken off your shoes. Every day to define man's mission yeah. Look into the sky for divine transmission yeah. Deaf man's vision makes the blind man listen yeah. Eyes on the prize, this is blind ambition Thank you <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another edition of the Dojo Talk Podcast um, Bonus episode This episode will not be numbered um, <laughs> For various reasons Oh man, I can't believe I'm doing this. But <laughs> anywho, it is April second, um, the day after April Fool's Day. In case anybody doesn't know by now, uh, for all my fight fans out there, um, Habib Nurmagomedov versus Max Holloway was not an April Fool's joke. Um, this is not a drill. It's it's going down at UFC 223. Um, I will address that. Um, at a later podcast, I don't want to spend too much time on that now because we have <laughs> more pressing matters to get to. But yeah, that that fight's the real thing. So um, that's 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 gonna be crazy. But anywho, it's it's been a it's been a pretty interesting weekend to say the least. Um, yeah, a lot going down, man. We got the Final Four in college uh, basketball going down by now. Um. If you guys didn't see the women's Final Four uh, championship game, I didn't see the game, but I saw some highlights. Shout outs to Notre Dame and shout outs to, um, how was her name? Marike? I cannot remember her last name. Um, but she hit the game winning uh, shot. That was insane. She's hit two game winning shots in the tournament. Second one gets her a national title. So congrats to her and Notre Dame. Um, got a chance to play some Tekken this uh saturday that was actually pretty cool i haven't done any gaming in a while um actually that was my first time playing tekken 7 since i bought it uh shout outs to everybody who uses noctis on tekken because i mop all of y'all get out of here with that trash <laughs> get noctis out of here man every time they bring out a dlc character everybody wants to use a dlc character get them out of here let me stop talking trash i'm not honestly that good in tekken for real but um to the two people who i played who repeatedly used Noctis and Claudio mopped both of them up. So, um, y'all are trash. But, <laughs> yeah, man. This this weekend's been, it's been cool. Been, um, working on my book lately. Uh, edited 37 pages yesterday. Um, probably up to about 40 right now. Uh, and I um, have 102 pages total to edit. So I'm actually really tired, man. I've been staring at this Word document for a very long time, uh, making corrections for this final edit. But I got, got to do what I got to do. But today I decided, I, I, I edited for about 20 minutes. And I just, I could I wasn't feeling it, man. I, I think yesterday just kind of burned me out. So I decided to, um, I, I, I don't know if I would describe this as move on to better things. I, I moved on to a thing. Um, with things plural but um yeah I'm, 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 I'm fulfilling a promise that I regretfully made some time ago um, but I am a man of my word and I, I have to um I have to fulfill that word and unlike Rick Grimes on The Walking Dead last night I'm not gonna lie to y'all um, I'm gonna keep my word and I'm gonna do <laughs> what I said I was gonna do um so with that being said bonus episode bonus album review <laughs> macho man's album be a man john cena's album you can't see me is, is that what these albums are called i'm not gonna lie to you guys i i i, I took notes but i didn't take notes I, I should not have listened to these albums on an empty stomach that was not a good choice because it, it quickly got me really irritated um okay yes yeah, so be a man and um oh god where you at john cena okay yeah and you can't see me so before I even get <laughs> to talking about these, let's 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 take a trip back to even remember like how it this even came to be. Like why is this episode even a thing? Um, so I, I'm gonna guess this conversation happened on Tumblr because I I wasn't there when this happened. But Joy from the Sports Sound Off, I have to blame you for 90% of this. <laughs> 
if I'm wrong, you guys out there in the Tumblr world can correct me. Um, but I want to say Joey was the first person who even tossed this in the universe that I should review Macho Man's album. I don't remember when this was, probably like a month or two ago. And for some reason, ever since he, you know, he put that out in the universe, that album kept finding its way back to me because Joey mentioned it. Antaku mentioned it to me. Uh, kind of as expected, because we all, you know, converse on Tumblr, so on and so forth. Also, my homie Davon called me one time while I was randomly in Best Buy, and he brought the album up to me. And I'm pretty sure he didn't know about those other two conversations, because he's not on Tumblr. So three times this album has just been floating around in the atmosphere, and I, I took it as a sign that maybe I should just do this. And I decided just for the length of the episode... And for further shenanigans, why not just review John Cena's album too? Because why not? What's the worst? You know what? I'm not even. <laughs> but yeah, so basically, in a, in a nutshell, this that the album just kind of kept finding its way back to me somehow. Um, just in random conversation, even at work the other day. I don't even remember how this became a thing, but we were talking about, like, commercials and ads and stuff like that. I know any of you guys, if you watch wrestling back in the day, you remember the old Macho Man commercials with the Slim Jims. And I'm not going to lie, I, I'm, I'm laughing while I say this, <laughs> but I'm, I'm dead serious. Macho Man Randy Savage is literally probably the, why, probably the reason why I eat Slim Jims. <laughs> I love beef jerky, and it's, it's probably because of Macho Man pause <laughs> yeah man yeah so um this morning I, I was trying to edit my book and like i said i, I was kind of through with it and i just i wanted to do an episode today i was just i wanted to kind of keep my creative juices flowing but i, I didn't want to edit anymore because that was kind of just killing my soul slowly and so I decided, you know what, man? Let's let's do this episode. Let's knock it out. Let's <laughs> let's let's make it happen. So without further ado, let's uh let's get these album reviews on the road. So first up the bat, Macho Man Randy Savage. I want to say this came out in 2000. Let me let me double check. Let me get my fact check correct. Yep, came out in 2003. Uh, the album is entitled Be a Man. I'm not going to give Macho Man Randy Savage's background if you don't know who he is. Um, this episode probably just isn't for you. And a rest in peace also to Macho Man. I can't remember the year he passed away, but wrestling fans, you guys, you know, for anybody else, he is no longer with us. Huh. But on to this, uh, this album. Um... I where 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 do I even start with? First of all, I hate everybody for making me do this. Let's let's get that out there first and <laughs> first and foremost. I spent my Monday morning my on my day off when I should be relaxing, and 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 in, in my efforts to relax, I threw on a Macho Man album. I don't know how that happened, but it 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 did. So. <laughs> And just a, another quick note, um, normally when I review albums, just to give a quick, a quick like look into my process, I normally listen to an album at least like four to five times before I review it to kind of get time to sit with it, you know, digest it, look up lyrics, do all that good stuff. I was not going to listen to this any more than I had to. I gave this album 1.3 listens exactly 1.3 <laughs> so <laughs> this macho man album um i i took notes while i was listening to the album and i would just write the track down and then just kind of throw out some thoughts while i was listening to it um but before i even get to any of the real songs on this album we got we got to talk about this intro um we need to talk. This this intro is a big deal. Um, I don't know who Big Three Records is, but I guess that's 
who was like behind this album but you know macho man was pretty adamant about shouting them out uh so shout shout outs to big three uh, are y'all still around don't know kind of hope not no disrespect <laughs> but, so the intro of this album starts off and you get like this news reporter uh lady who's uh, reporting that Macho Man's releasing this rap album, and then the song, not the song, the intro kind of cuts to, like, different people's reactions and stuff like that, and of course, you know, you got people saying, oh, he, what is he doing rapping, blah, 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 there's this one chick in the background, and she's the only one that I paid attention to, because, <laughs> because out of everybody else, all of the other cuts and all the people that were talking about the album, this chick, out of the blue, um, and I mean, nothing wrong with being a s supporter of Macho Man, you know, he's, he, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, um, fault you for that, but, um, th this, this, uh, this, this woman goes, um, yeah, he looked good for an old man, uh, with his leather pants and his muscles out <laughs> bulging, <laughs> I don't know what it was about the intro, <laughs> But she was the only person who just stood out because she, she, oh my God, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how much they paid you for that sound bite, but, um, yeah. So that, that's how the album starts. We, we get to hear people's reactions to Macho Man recording an album and uh, apparently uh, chicks are digging the leather pants and the muscles. Um, and he looks good for an old man. Take, take that for what it's worth. <laughs> so that 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 killed me first start off top i'm not even 20 seconds into this album and i'm already dying and then 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 we get to the songs so i'm 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 not gonna break down a ton of lyrics though i did write some quotables um but just overall thoughts on what i listened to um you know this 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 album was an experience um, I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing, but it happened to me. Kind of like how I felt after I watched Sausage Party. Like I left the theater feeling like, alright, I, I watched something. I, I don't know what I watched, but I watched it. And I, I kind of got the same feeling with this. Like I, I listened to this, and I don't know what I was supposed to pull from it, but I got something. I don't, I don't think it's what I was supposed to get. <laughs> oh boy this this album um i'm not i'm not mad at the rap uh the rap rock combination i anybody who knows me i enjoy music in general i definitely enjoy rap music i also enjoy rock music also some rock music but this um yeah these are uh, these beats on here this whole this whole rap rock thing you get you had going on whew, this this was a task to get through um a lot of these beats sounded very fruity loopish no diss to fruity loops once upon a time when i was an aspiring producer that phase of my life ended very quickly <laughs> but <laughs> you know I, I used to hop on fruity loops you know try to try to make my beats and all that good stuff a lot of these beats sound like the, the stock fruity loop guitar riffs but like without <laughs> like, without any added effects like it was literally just the stock sound and nothing was like eq'd or not even that it, it oh, oh god I, uh, yeah a lot of the production was was really heavy on, on the rap rock side and but to 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 keep it diverse um they, they tried to keep it diverse there were a few tracks when Macho Man was going for the, uh, I want to say the club feel. Um, I'm not sure what club uh, he was trying to appeal to. I'm, I'm not a, a club goer at all, but I would imagine if I was, um, these quote unquote club beats, yeah, they're not, ugh, um, they're not, yeah. Yeah, he kind of kind of missed the mark on that one. Hey, the, these, um, there was one of these tracks, and I'll I'll get to it when I start. Um, 
kind of going through my notes in more detail. One, one of these tracks have like this little 8-bit Nintendo synth in the background. <laughs> and it's like this, this, I don't, I don't think people are jamming that in the club, bro. I know this, oh, I mean, I get it, this was in 2003, so I can't judge this by today's standards. But even in 2003, I don't think, uh, I don't think 8-bit synths uh, were popping in the streets. I don't, I don't think that was a thing. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe he was on a new wave. Um, but <laughs> yeah, pr production wise, boy, this this album was a task to get through. Like a lot of very cringy rap rock beats, like some real uh they the a lot of these sound like they literally sound like like wrestler theme beats, but like throwaway wrestler theme beats. Like yeah, <laughs> for anybody who's a fight fan. If you ever buy any of the UFC DVDs, you know how they can um, they can't use like the real music they use at events because of copyright issues, and so on and so forth. So like, if you ever buy a UFC DVD, or even if you uh, rewatch a fight on Fight Pass, when they do like the intro music, they never use like the real songs they use during the actual show. They put like this generic, terrible rock track <laughs> in the background, and that's what all of these beats sound like. They all sound like that, but with like an 808 <laughs> just thrown in there. And oh boy, it is, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's enough about the beats. It's, it's not a lot to say. It's not, not, a, not a ton of good going on. I did not take notes on who produced any of these, nor did I care to find out who produced any of these. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just leave that there. Um, I, I guess ly lyrically... Um, Macho Man is very much of the uh, the Dr. Seuss rhyme patterns. Lots of you know, lots of ABC rhyming schemes <laughs> going on. <laughs> oh boy, let's let's get into some of these tracks, man. Let's let's just um let's just get into some of these tracks. I'm gonna just read some of these notes that I uh, took to myself while I was listening to this album, and I was trying to figure out what exactly was going on. Um, so I already mentioned the intro, so we'll we'll skip that. Uh, so we'll go to I'm Back, which is the intro track. And I, I would encourage you guys, because I went through it, so y'all need to go through it too. L listen to some of this, maybe before or after you listen to my review. You'll get a, a better appreciation of what I'm trying to explain to you, of how my listen experience went. <laughs> but <laughs> this opening track, uh, I'm Back, uh, a nice little, and I, <laughs> I say this very jokingly, a nice little fruity loop. Uh, guitar riff, um, like I guess the one positive, you know, uh, Macho Man was kind of on beat. That's that's a that's a plus. It's something I always look for. You know, you you got to be on beat. So he, he was he was on beat. Um, know what else really to, <laughs> to say about that track? Um, so shout outs to the outro on the track. Uh, he, he gave a lot of shout outs. Uh, shout outs to Eric on the boards, whoever that is. You know, I'm assuming that was the engineer. Uh, shout outs to you and, and the big three crew. <laughs> so yeah, this uh, I can't even really say this album had punchlines. Just a lot of very, like I said, man, a lot of there's a lot of Dr. Seuss going on, man. A lot of um, a lot of real simple. <laughs> just, Oh boy, I'm the wrestling king, but now I'm spitting lyrics. Took a break from the ring because I want y'all to hear this. Bars. That's how he starts off his album. <laughs> oh man. Yes, it's um. That was that. I'm 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 not. Yeah, I I don't I don't have any more for that song. Um, are you ready? Another um. Uh, rap rap rock track and that that theme kind of just goes on throughout this album and every time i think it's gonna leave it it comes back and it, it just it won't leave me alone um and i literally have that under this are you ready track like this the rap rock thing that this this is a continuing thing this this is the theme and it's, it's not leaving um are you ready as i said before this, this album sounds like like b-side <laughs> wrestler introduction music it's, it's kind of what that is kind of what that is but then, man, this album took a turn. A very bad turn. 
a, a very bad turn really quickly i mean really the album never got on track but <laughs> this this track hit the floor um macho man and, and dance tracks or would be um dance tracks this should not be a thing um if there's any beat that was made on Fruity Loops on this album, it has definitely hit the floor. This, this, this beat has, has Fruity Loops just written all over it. And I was so pissed while I was listening to this. Because I got like a minute in and I went to check a notification on my phone and I accidentally <laughs> hit the playback button. And I restarted the song and I had to listen to this over again. So I listened to this song like one and a quarter times more than I needed to. I was not happy about that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> New school wrestlers take it from me. This game's like a school. You gotta earn a degree. Oh, hold up. We're, we're not done. There are more bars. Oh, no. All right, that was the end of that bar. Um, But, Lord. Yeah. That, um... You gotta earn your degree. I don't, I don't know. Macho Man's trying to... Um... Drop, drop some kind of knowledge on y'all, I guess. Um... You know, you, you take it or leave it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, remember me. The the most... Um, of all the rhyme schemes on this album, this, this was probably the most... Uh, Dr. Seuss-ish. <laughs> oh, God. I don't even have notes in this song. Literally, I'm reading my note, and my note for Remember Me says I forgot to even take notes. <laughs> like, there were stretches while I was listening to this, and I just literally, like, I just tuned out while it was on. I just, I, I couldn't do it. I, I could not, I could not do it. Um, and, then, and then we get tracks like Tear It Up, and the rap rock trend continues and you know macho man's trying to do the whole being aggressive on the track and um it's kind of wild because macho man doesn't have a rapper voice his 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 wrestling voice is his rapper voice it, it never changes and it's <laughs> oh boy the track macho thing we uh we, we take a slight departure from rap rock, and this is the track I mentioned earlier. We depart from rap rock to go to 8-bit synth beats in the background uh, that we're supposed to dance in the club to. Um, I think the only thing I got was uh, from this track. Um, one of the verses, Macho Man pulled pull some chick's number in the VIP, so that happened, you know. Um, good job, Macho Man. VIP, you know, holding it down. <laughs> oh, man. Oh man, but, but, there's one track on this album, track number nine, this will go down in history, I'm not sure how many other wrestlers have dissed other wrestlers, but Macho Man did it, and all I gotta say is Hulk, Hulk Hogan man, how, how you let Macho bar you up like this, how did you let, how did you let Macho Man just go in the booth, and just give you that work. You, you had, you should have had a return disc track. And if there is one, um, I don't know if there is one out there. I don't want to hear it if you got it. But you should have did one. Um, yeah, man. My, my <laughs> Come on, Hulk. How, 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 how you call Macho Man's dad, but you don't call him to squash the beef? At least according to Macho Man, that's his recollection of what happened. Um, that's that ain't a good look. Ain't a good look, homie. I know this back in two thousand three, but still. You called us pops. You didn't. You didn't talk to Macho Man. That's that's not street, bro. That's not um. That is, that's not a good look. That's not a good look. A lot of people looking at you sideways. But where where are the bars on this? Where where are the bars? They call you Hollywood. Don't make me laugh, cause your movies and your acting skills are both trash. Your movie straight the <laughs> your movie straight the video. The box office can't stand while I got myself a feature role in Spider Man. Bars, bro. <laughs> How you let them flex on you like that, Hulk? <laughs> How you let them flex on you like that? Oh my God, the bars. He gave he gave Hulk the business on being man. Oh my God. 
gave gave you the business on being man. I I wouldn't feel comfortable walking around knowing that Macho Man went in the booth and 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 gave me that work. Um, <laughs> dude, please, your pay per view event was a joke. You're avoiding Randy Savage because you know you'll get smoked. Come on, that phony fight. The Rock spanked you fast, but when I challenged Hogan to a real fight, he passed. He G-checking you, Hulk. He, G- <laughs> he G-checks you this entire song. Straight G. For three verses, you got G-checked. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Be a be a man is definitely the shining highlight of this album. Oh my god. Um I I took notes <laughs> for other tracks on this, but a lot of my notes on this album are literally just me being angry. Um <laughs> feel the madness. I, I didn't write anything for the track, I just wrote that I had a few more tracks to go and um this was a very punishing listen. And at that point, uh, at the halfway point of the album, it was just, it was about survival. Um, uh, oh boy, uh, what's that all about? Um, you got a Macho Man love track, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Maybe this is why the chick uh, in, in the intro loves Macho Man. Maybe she likes his more um, affectionate side. You know, he, he raps about him being down for you and you being down for him. And he'll do anything for you and um you know real real hallmark card uh type lines you know but <laughs> so that track happened um yeah gonna be trouble but by the time i got to this track uh just for context this album is 14 tracks in or 14 tracks long um yeah for for gonna be trouble which is track 13 um, I, I literally just wrote, I completely checked out. <laughs> and that, that beat sounds like one of the throwaways from Roy Jones' album that just didn't make the cut. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. But the album ended um, with a dedic- uh, dedication track to Mr. Perfect, for people who don't know, was another wrestler from back in the day. Um, and I got to give this <laughs> track some props. Because like when I when I heard the name Mr. Perfect, like it rung a bell, but my my memory from wrestling back then was a bit fuzzy. So like I, I kind of remember the name, but I, I couldn't put a face to it. So I just I went back, uh, uh, typed in Kurt Hennig on uh, YouTube to look up his highlights. And I just saw the <laughs> the promo he did. Uh, he would do like these little Mr. Perfect like skits or promos or whatever, but like him shooting a basketball. Uh, he hit the golf putt from like 40 yards out, but he had the genius one where he, he threw himself his own touchdown pass. That was that was wild. So that was cool to just go back and watch that. I hadn't seen Mr. Perfect in a long time. So, you know, if, if anything out of that track, um, you know, gave me, gave me a trip down memory lane to, to go reminisce on, on the old school wrestling days. But, um, oh, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm like 30 minutes into this podcast. I, I don't know what else to say about this album. <laughs> oh, man. Remember Trunk Plaza in Atlantic City? That's where I took the belt and didn't take no pity. Remember the Silver Dome up in Motown, 93 strong, and I, and I came to put it down. Much again, Macho Man flexing on y'all with his accomplishments. You know, that, that's another takeaway from this album. Macho Man was a very, you know, accomplished human, and he was not afraid to let y'all know the work that he put in through all 14 of these tracks that I managed to get through. <laughs> I would be really interested, and I'm never going to do this. Um, I'll be really interested to hear how this album would sound in a car. But just by any chance that somebody I know would happen to pull up on me, you know, in the next lane, and maybe my windows crack down a little bit and they can hear what I'm listening to, I don't want to have that moment. I don't want to know what that feels like. Somebody asks me, hey, to ask me, you know, hey, yo, was it, you, you was listening to Macho Man? I, I don't want to have that moment. I don't want to say that. 
Well, I guess they know now if they heard this podcast, but, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, that, 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 whew. this was a thing that happened, 2003. Um, I would encourage you guys to listen to it because I had to listen to it. And I know Jay-Z said, I went through this so you wouldn't have to, but I'm not Sean Carter. So I need you to go through this because I need somebody else to feel what I felt while I listen to this um, yeah I will definitely leave links in the description below <laughs> for y'all to check this out <laughs> have yourself a nice little rap rock experience uh, listening to Macho Man ag- aggressively deliver bars and Dr. Seuss rhyme fashion um, yeah that 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 yeah I, 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 don't, I don't know what else to, to say. I'm literally speechless. Literally speechless. <laughs> but, that was Macho Man. Be a man. R.I.P. On to the next album. John Cena. You Can't See Me. I don't know why I thought it was a good idea. To listen to both of these albums on the same day. I should have listened to Macho Man first. Maybe just kind of sat on that. Maybe listen to John Cena tomorrow. But I'm a glutton for punishment. I, I do things that I often regret. Um, so after I listened to Macho Man, I just went on ahead and I listened to John Cena. And I once again want to emphasize that listening to albums on an empty stomach, I, I know you would think there are no correlation, but it. It, it doesn't make for a good listening experience. You find yourself being very irritated really fast. And um, let's, let's, let's get to this, this, uh, this album. Now, this, this was a bit more interesting than the Macho Man album. Only because he, he, he had some legit, you know, features and, and help <laughs> on this album. You have production from Jake One. Shout outs to Jake One. Um, awesome producer. Still out here doing his thing. Um, had Bumpy Knuckles on a few tracks on here. Um, you had Esoteric um, on a track on here. So he, he had like some legit help, some legit features. Like I said, uh, you know, legit producers, you know, lending them beats, so on and so forth. So I went into this album. I don't know if I should say with my hopes up. That that might be a stretch. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I it really this album should have been called John Cena and Trademark because whoever Trademark is, I'm assuming this is somebody John Cena knows personally. They're on like every track, so really this is a John Cena and Trademark album. John Cena is just a bigger name, so they they you know they, they're gonna say it's his work. But trade Trademark's on like every song, uh, whoever Trademark is. But anywho. This this album, and this this album was a setup because <laughs> the, first, the first track the time is now, bro. Jake one bodied that beat for real though. <laughs> that beat is actually pretty mean, and I felt like I was being set up, albeit you know, continuing the the um, th- this this album is slightly more advanced from Dr. Seuss. This is like Dr. Seuss rhyme scheme 1.5, um. You know, words with more than one syllable were used to craft a few of these tracks. <laughs> but, you know, I come in with the first track and it got my hopes up. Like I said, man, Jake One comes in. Beat's actually pretty mean, not going to lie. Kind of killed the beat. Uh, you know, Cena gonna Cena, I guess. You can take that for whatever it's worth. But it was it was decent. It was okay. It was, it was passable. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I got my soul straight. I brush your mouth like Colgate. Bars, maybe. <laughs> but, <laughs> so we get that in the first track. I'm like, all right, this ain't, this ain't too bad. It's, 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 it's okay. It's, 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 it's all right. But we go on to further disappointment. Um, but I, I will say, oh, shout out to Eli, who actually did a beat on here, too. Um... This this album, 
trying, I'm trying to be optimistic, man. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying really hard over here. Y'all better appreciate this episode. The fact that I've been talking about these two albums for like 30 plus minutes, I'm getting frustrated. <laughs> Y'all better appreciate this episode, man. <laughs> but, <laughs> so the one thing I'll, I'll, I'll I guess I'll, I'll give props for this album before, like the production wasn't terrible. It was. It was okay. It was I. It was it was decent in, in the strongest way a, a decent <laughs> production could be. Um, he he was he was he was trying to go for that like gritty like '90s feel, I guess, kind of sort of. Um, this album came out in 2005, but like I, I feel like he was trying to pull that vintage sound from these beats kind of sort of but once again it sounded very um this album sounded like you ever know anybody when like they first start trying to become a rapper and like that first like 10 to 15 batches of songs they have that are really trash but they're trying to be a rapper and they're really excited so they're just really happy happy just to be making music and they they think what they made is the best in the world and you know you, you want to support them so you try to pat them on the shoulder give them some encouragement in the back of your mind you know it's not really all that but there might be something there um this this album kind of sounds like those tracks but like he actually put them out packaged them and sold it um yeah <laughs> so that uh that happened but a few of these tracks and boy oh boy I, I took notes on this album but i'm be honest with y'all man by the time i got through macho man's album and i had to listen to this my, my whew, i was going through it bro I, I was going through it this this album had moments <laughs> that were okay but they were just moments um the track flow uh flow easy i want to say uh, did Flow Easy have Bumpy Knuckles? I want to say Bumpy Knuckles was on Flow Easy. Um, yeah, Bumpy Knuckles was on Flow Easy, produced by Hidden Agenda. This is another song where like the beat was cool, it was alright, it was something there, a little bit, but um, <laughs> I can't even see the hand movements that I'm doing. I just, I, you know, it was. Ugh. I mean, shout out to Bumpy Knuckles. He, he he gave some solid verses on this album. Um, wasn't easy to outshine everybody. I mean, it, sorry, I completely lied. It, it, outshining other people on this album was not a hard task. So, I mean, he accomplished that. Kudos to him. Um, but yeah, for Flow Easy, like, it was alright. But then it just, you know, I don't know. First and foremost, I, I, I sure post potential like Carmelo. Turn a hard MC to Jello bars <laughs> yeah that's 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 some scene of punchlines man that's that's what we got but uh so flow easy you know that was, was all right but then man kind of like the macho man album I, I that track right now no, number four that, that that should not be a thing this this track should not you can't go from like these you know kind of like cookie cutter 90s uh, you know gritty production to kind of like this really like bubblegum track bro like you can't you can't take that sharp left turn man you gotta ease people into that and it's out you know right now hits and it's like what what is this why did this happen why what's no you can't do that no stop <laughs> So that happened, and uh, so yeah. By, by that, by the time right now happened, I, I just kind of tuned out because that track just kind of kind of pissed me off. Um, then we get to make it loud. Literally, my note on this track is: Am I even still taking notes? Because <laughs> I just zoned out in the middle of listening to this, and I just I didn't know what was going on. Everything was just. Uh, let's let's go to the track. Just another day. 
so I will say for this track, and keep in mind, this album is 17 tracks, bruh, why, why did you, 17, you should have stopped at 12, 10 probably actually, you made 17, just another day, um, I'll say for this track, I can't even believe I'm saying this. I like the concept, kind of, sort of, <laughs> of what this track was going for. So John Cena and Trademark are kind of like going back and forth, and they're giving you. Th th this is uh, John Cena's like "Keep It Real," his his struggle track, also produced by Jake One. Shout outs to Jake One. Um, so. John Cena's verses and lines are kind of him giving you the the struggles of the rich life, you know, the problems of being rich and dealing with fame, so on and so forth. While trademarks verses are the kind of dealing with like the everyday man, you know, your your everyday commoner out here just trying to make it. So like I, I kind of enjoyed the the con the idea was okay. I'm like, all right, that's cool. You got people who are both you know rapping about the struggle so to speak but from two different perspectives i can i can dig that i can respect that but um y'all y'all struggles are not equal um uh, trademark was going through it on this track bro that the struggle was very real for this man um, making moves every day so the ends could meet no gas no money so i use my legs and feet <laughs> <laughs> no uber back then bro legs and feet the man is pushing toes man out here pushing toes the struggle so real oh so real oh man so that, that was that that was that was that track um <laughs> Shoes so old, you can call them retros. Man, I'm so damn broke. Even my wallet echoes. <laughs> oh, boy. That is... <laughs> Trademark, bro. I hope you're doing... Right. I mean, this is back in 2005. I mean, I've seen it, your homie. I assume he's taking care of you. So, I hope... Um, I hope your wallet not echoing no more, bro. But I feel you. I understand. I, I definitely get it. Um, my financial struggle is definitely real right now. I'm waiting anxious, anxiously for Friday to get here. So I get it. Um, yeah. Just another day. <laughs> Keep fronting. We got a Big L vocal chop. Rest in peace to Big L. One of my all-time favorite rappers. Uh, his vocal chop might have been the only good thing. No, okay. What this this was the song. Why? Why John why hold up. I hold up. I'm I'm getting irritated all over again. Was this was this the song? There was a song on this album where he this rhyme scheme he was doing was it bothered me to death. I I he kept doing like this re <sighs> It was like this repetitive word flow where he would repeat a word over and over and I just I didn't I, I didn't understand it um was it this song uh, yes follow me you stick around round round when it's hot you claiming that you down 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 but you not stop you kept repeating words through the whole verse and it, it would be okay if you're repeating words, but like your punchline was mean. But you're just repeating words for the sake of repeating words. And it's really... No. Stop. Just don't. Don't. Don't ever do that again. Don't ever. Just. Don't ever do that again. Um. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. I, I, I don't um yeah on on to the next um track or, or note <laughs> oh man um what, what what else we got going on with this album uh so the next track uh that we will uh talk about 
Um, we didn't want you to know. Make you break. Yeah, let me start that over. Make you break dance for me. Have you doing head spins? Ship you to DC, covered in redskins. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> bars? Was that bars? I don't think it was. I don't think it was, man. Ugh. Oh no. Another thing I noticed. <laughs> And I wrote this as a note to the track Bad Bad Man, but honestly, this note applies to both albums. So I'll, I'll, I'll grab the lyrics from Rap Genius. Um, why, why do y'all have annotations for some of these punchlines? Like, we don't know. Like, dude, d d d we ain't listening to Lupe, bro. We don't need annotations for this. Like, <laughs> There was nothing, nothing complex about any of this. And y'all have the nerve, the gumption, to put annotations. I don't know, bro. But that, that happened. That, that was the thing. The track running game, my only line of note is I'm honestly about to skip this track. And I ended up skipping it. So I, I can't even, uh, yeah. On to the next one. Beantown. Featuring Esoteric. Shoutouts to Esoteric. Um, I first became aware of him actually through the Army of the Pharaohs albums. If anybody's ever listening. Hardcore hip-hop group out of Philly. Um, if you've never listened to them and you like really, just like really gritty, raw, offensive rap. Listen to albums like Ritual of Battle, Torture Papers, um... I can't remember the other one, but the track Spaz Out. I can't remember what album that was on. But um, Esoteric's a part of that collective. Really dope group. Um, but anywho, Bean Town, uh, they give their little ode to Boston. I was counting on Esoteric to just save me from this album. I mean, his, his verse was cool. It was, it was cool. So, you know, shout outs to Esoteric. Um, I, don't, I don't really got much else to say. Um, this is how we roll. Bro, if you don't get this bootleg B-side unit beat out of here, bro. <laughs> I couldn't finish this track. This, uh, I skipped this probably like 45 seconds in because it it sounded like a fake G-Unit, like Stunt 101 kind of beat. And it just, it pissed me off. It was so, don't, yeah. This album sounds like it came out in 2005. I can say that much. <laughs> Oh my god. I've been talking about these albums for going on 50 minutes. I gotta wrap this up, B. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get out of here. Uh, I mean, literally, my next couple notes, man, is just me checking out of tracks. Chain Gang is the click. I literally just wrote. I've mentally checked out. I don't even know why I'm writing this note. <laughs> what happened on this track again? <laughs> and the last track, if it all ended tomorrow, uh, my note is about well this album's about to end so we gotta hurry this up uh some somewhere in the second verse john cena had some kind of story but i i, I um i checked out i don't remember what the story was something about somebody knocking on his door somebody had a purse i i, I don't know what else um transpired ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um yeah, this album in a nutshell, take um, a guy who wants to be a rapper but can't really rap, you give him access to a studio, um, a few notable producers who try to help him out, but like I said, it, it sounds like that first batch of the first 20 songs you ever made that may have a few good things about them, but they're mostly trash, but you're excited that you're just rapping, so you put it out. And that's that's what we got here. That was um That was this album in a nutshell. Shout out to Jake One. Literally the best thing about this album. And I, I can't say enough. I'm a big fan of his production. Um quick plug for him. If 
you want to hear a good instrumental instrumental album uh listen to jake one's prayer emojis album um where he literally took a bunch of gospel samples and chopped them up into hip-hop beats and it was really dope um so once again shout out to jake one rest of this album no man I, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I don't got nothing else, man. I can't. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. But like I said, man, y'all listen to these albums. I, I went through this, not so y'all wouldn't have to go through it, but so I could find someone else uh, who could go through it with me. I was just looking for a hand to hold while I was listening to this. Um, shout out to my co-host Antaku I know you're over there in Jersey right now Where it's snowing um, I'm assuming you, you might be snowed in for a couple days You should throw on one of these man you know? Go through the struggle with me <laughs> Oh man I can't believe I listened to these Y'all are not going to get another episode like this For a very long time So you better appreciate this And just play it over and over Cause this, oof. The chances of me doing another, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. I considered retiring after listening to this. This, this was a, uh, this was a challenge. I was, I, I guess I was entertained, kind, kind of, sort of. You know, it was a new listen, so that was something. That, I think aside from the Be a Man track, I hadn't really listened to any of these albums or heard anything from. So um. Yeah, um, athletes releasing albums. These two gentlemen were part of that trend. I don't know what else to say. I I I, I don't. Um, <laughs> but before I get out of here, as always, man, you can check this podcast out on SoundCloud, YouTube, Google Play, iTunes. If you're on iTunes, please rate and subscribe on iTunes, um, and leave a review. I would greatly appreciate it. Questions can be sent to Dodo Talk Podcast at yahoo.com. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter at Serial Sensei, and you can hit us up on Facebook at the Dojo Talk uh, Facebook group on Facebook. But before I get out of here, real quick, I always do my recommendations at the end of my episodes, at least my solo ones. So, on a serious note, um, my recommendation today comes from Netflix. Um, it is a series, ah, a series called Rapture. Um, this is a docu series uh, produced by Mass Appeal. Um, uh, at one point, I had the director's name up here, and then I lost it. So I'm sorry <laughs> for the director, whose name I do not have on my screen anymore. But anywho, um, Rapture is a docu series uh, that basically just follows uh, like musicians, rappers. Uh, producers kind of like you get to see their come up um you get to see like their creative process you get to see their backstories but it's really well done i haven't watched the entire series um i've been skipping through episodes because not all of these artists are people i listen to though i might go back and watch them anyway because I, I just enjoy watching people's like stories to see how they started to you know seeing how their journey has progressed so on and so forth um but i did watch the rhapsody episode and the Just Blaze episode, which were both really, really, really dope, man. Um, it was really cool to see Rhapsody's beginnings, how she started off with Ninth Wonder, um, how he kind of like coached her through becoming a better artist. Like he would give her albums to listen to to like help her with her flow and all that good stuff. Um, then you get to see her up to the point of like releasing Layla's Wisdom, where she gets nominated for Grammys. <clears throat> Excuse me. So on and so forth. So like her episode, I thought was really well done. Um, just blazes episode was awesome he's definitely an all-time favorite producer um you get to see um he had a real cool moment um with him and havoc where <laughs> they um they remade the shook ones beat like on the spot it was really dope and i think he even like remixed it a little bit so that was awesome to see um i think he also had a, a quick clip with him and um once it was him and dj mustard um did like a quick like m impromptu beat session together where like uh mustard was showing him like how he 
kind of creates his beats and then just blaze kind of like hops on he you know kind of tries to like add into what uh mustard was doing so that was awesome but like just blaze is kind of cool to watch because he's like a super music nerd like a real gearhead so it was just kind of really awesome to to um to see that to see his journey how he started how he got into music how like his uh his dad was a heavy influence on him um so yeah they, they, it's really they're really well done like i said i only watched those two episodes so um i can't speak on the other ones but just other artists um who are covered um well i'll just run down the whole list so you got uh logic nas dave east t-i-g-e-z two chains rhapsody just blaze and a boogie with the hoodie um, so i'm not sure if they're gonna do <clears throat> like multiple seasons of these but definitely worth a, a, a look if you're on netflix um episode is probably about an hour or so long uh, some of these are longer than others but most of them run almost about an hour long um, but definitely if you're a creative um or if you're an artist i definitely would recommend you watching those and speaking of just blaze i'm gonna give a quick shout out to taylor gordon um do i have her twitter handle uh, I wanna, I wanna, uh, alright, so her Twitter handle is at pocket underscore queen, um, this video, I don't think it's on YouTube, but it's on, um, there is a, a video on Facebook, it's like a quick snippet, um, she did a drum cover of the Just Blaze beat that Show Me What You Got for Jay-Z, bro, that cover is fire, like, <laughs> she killed it, but, like, the video on Facebook is only, there's like 40 seconds or something like that so you only get to hear a little bit of it but she bodied that cover man it was so good i'm, I'm hoping she puts a full video out of that because that that cover is so mean but um i had to give her a quick uh, plug real quick because i thought that was really dope but that's all i got for the day man i didn't <laughs> it's a bonus episode for y'all like i said this this won't even be numbered um i'm gonna try to just edit this and put this out the same day so i'm recording this on april 2nd if you hear this on april 2nd it means i recorded it edited and threw it up the same day um but yeah man <laughs> this weekend ufc 223 going down definitely gonna have a crazy podcast for that one joy if you're listening i'm sure we already told you but keep that schedule cleared because we're you know we're definitely gonna need you for that episode especially with all the madness surrounding this car now that the main event is going the way that's going but yeah man content still coming album review is still coming i'm reviewing macho man and john cena for y'all i don't know what other podcasters you know who do this so i just i would appreciate because I, I sat through this for y'all man i i did this for y'all i did this for the culture i hate that term <laughs> I did this for y'all, man. So I'd appreciate it, man. If I can get some some likes, some reposts, share this to people. Give me an iTunes review. Spread the word. But the, don't, you know, I don't want people to get the wrong idea that, you know, for new listeners, this is um, this, this a one-off. I ain't reviewing albums like this for a long time. But <laughs> if you like MMA, if you like hip-hop, uh, talk about movies, maybe anime even every now and again, um, you know share this podcast with, with people who you think would be interested and like i said man I, I, I did this for y'all i kept my promise my man of my word do not suggest me any other albums like this because to review because i need to take a break i need to recharge um this took a lot out of me <laughs> to do this. so um but yeah man macho man randy savage be a man john cena you can't see me both of these albums are on spotify that's how i listen to them i'll leave links in the description below so y'all can get a get a taste of you know what i what i went through what i did for y'all what i sacrificed you know but i put myself on the line to, to listen to these albums for y'all <laughs> yeah man i'm out of here because I'm, I'm i'm i am starving right now bro like i can't emphasize how hungry i am um and I've listened to these on an empty stomach, and I think it just made me even more hungry and irritated. But this has been another edition of the Dodo Top Podcast bonus episode. I am your host, Serial Sensei. Thank you guys for listening, and until next time, I will catch y'all later. Peace.